Second Samuel chapter 9 Itasoma kwa lugha ya Kiswahili as God will enable me Second Samuel chapter 9 verse 1 to 13 let us read the whole of it is not long Nikitaka kuzungumza juu ya remnant of disaster kwa Kiswahili niliada kwa Biblia ya remnant wanaitwa mabaki mabaki ya janga mabaki ya maovu mabaki ya mabaya mabaki ya misukasuko mabaki ya kisulisuri hizo zote so get it in your own style remnant of disaster disaster also talks of tragedy talks of calamity talks of adversity talks of hardship and hard times and harsh times all those words speak of the same thing so as i go on i hope that you will catch up together second samuel chapter 9 verse 1 to 13 the bible says biblia inasema kisha daudi akasema je amesalia ehe also mabaki ni masalia ama msalia ama diko mdavadi alitoa jina msalia anyway aha kisha daudi akasema je amesalia mtu mmoja katika nyumba ya Sauli nipate kumtendea mema kwa ajili ya Yonathan palikuwa na mtu mishi mmoja wa nyumba ya Sauli jina lake Siba basi akamwita aende kwa Daudi na mfalme akamuuliza wewe diwe Siba naye akasema mimi mtumwa wako die mfalme akasema je hakuna hata sasa mtu yeyote wa nyumba ya Sauli nipate kumtendea mema ya Mungu Siba akamwambia mfalme Yonathani anaye mwana hata sasa aliye na kilema cha mguu Nne inasema mfalme akamwambia yuko wapi Siba akamwambia mfalme Siba akamwambia mfalme tazama yumo katika nyumba ya makiri mwana wa mieli katika lodebali lodebari basi mfalme Daudi akatuma watu wakamuondoa katika nyumba ya makiri nataka nirudie hiyo basi mfalme Daudi akatuma watu wakamuondoa katika nyumba ya makiri mwana wa mieli katika lodebari basi mefibosheti mwana wa Yonathani mwana wa Sauli akaenda kwa Daudi akaanguka kifudifudi akasujudu Daudi akasema mefibosheti naye akaitika mimi hapa mtumwa wako Daudi akamwambia usiogope maana bila shaka nitakutendea mema kwa ajili ya Yonathani baba yako kwa ajili ya Yonathani baba yako kwa ajili ya dishia a a kwa ajili ya Yonathani baba yako nami nitakurudishia mashamba yote ya Sauli Mstari wa saba tena Daudi akamwambia usiogope maana bila shaka nitakutendea mema kwa ajili ya Yonathani Bii nasema nami nitakurudishia mashamba yote ya Sauli baba yako nawe utakula chakula mezani pangu daima akasujudu akasema mimi mtumwa wako ni nini hata ukamwangalia mbwa mfu kama mimi ndipo mfalme akamwita Siba mtumwa wa Sauli akamwambia Mali yote yaliyokuwa ya Sauli na ya nyumba yake nimempa mwana wa Bwana wako. Nawe utamlimia nchi hiyo wewe na wanao na watumwa wako. Nawe utamletea mwana wa Bwana wako matunda yake apate kukula apate chakula ale. Lakini mefibosheti mwana wa Bwana wako 
atakula chakula meza ni pangu siku zote. Basi huyo Siba alikuwa na wana kumi na watano na watumwa ishirini. Dipo Simba akamwambia mfalme, mimi mtumwa wako nitatenda hayo yote kama bwana wangu mfalme alivyoniamuru. Na kwa habari za Mefibosheth mfalme alisema atakula meza ni pangu kama mmoja wapo wa wana wa mfalme huyo mefibosheti alikuwa na mwana mdogo jina lake akiitwa Mika na watu wote na watu wote walikaa nyumba nyumbani mwa Simba walikuwa watumwa wa mefibosheti Dari wa 13 basi Mefibosheti akakaa Yerusalemu maana alikuwa akila chakula siku zote mezani pa mfalme naye alikuwa na kilema cha miguu yote miwili sema amina kwa neno la Bwana Baba wetu tunashukuru mara tena kwa nafasi hii ya kusikia neno lako Tunaomba ya kwamba Unapo tufundisha kupitia roho wako mtakatifu. Unapotumia uweze kufungua wale wote ambao wamefungua masikio yao na kutufundishe sisi sote ili tukaweza kujua ni nini unacho kwa ajili yetu kutokana na somo hili. Nena nasi na jina la Kristo itatukuzwa. Kwa jina la Yesu tuseme amina. Mabaki ya yeah. suko maisha haya tunayoishi kila asubuhi tunapoamka tunaamka tukiwa na matarajio na mawazo yetu na mafikira zetu zikiwa ziko wazi ya kwamba mambo yatakuwa sawa kama vile ilivyokuwa jana na hakuna hasa mtu amka asubuhi kama haugumwa na kichwa jana ukiwa na kutarajia kwamba kesho unaweza kosa kufika mahali unafikanga kila siku kwa sababu ndani ya kila mmoja wetu tunazo nguvu zinazo tuzungumzia ya kwamba yote yatakuwa sawa na ni kweli tulio ndani ya Yesu ni vizuri tuendelee kuwa na hayo matumaini Unajua kwamba kama uko na Yesu mambo yatakuwa sawa. Na kama kuna jambo ambalo litakaa lisije likawa sawa, basi huyo huyo tu Yesu tunaye mtumaini ako na uwezo wa kubadilisha mambo haya na ikawa mema kwa ajili yetu wakati na saa na siku ile sisi hatuwezi tukajua. Sema amen. Ila kuna siku huamka na unakuta kwamba kuna mambo yamekuja yako kinyume na matarajio. Mambo yabaya hauko umepangia. Mambo hauko umewaza. Jambo tu linatoka na ni kama ulimwengu unageuka. Unakuletea mambo haya tunaita mabaya ama uovu ama janga katika maisha. Kuna watu walianza doa zao vizuri zikafika mahali msikisuli suli kikaja na msukasuko doa ikatikiswa baada ya kutikiswa na zilikuwa nyingi kuna marafiki uliojua na watu wa familia ulijua zao zilizotikiswa wakasema sitakaa hapa ni goja mambo yawe mabaya zaidi nitajipanga na wakajipanga kulingana na vile waliona inafaa hata kama ilikuwa kinyume na mapenzi ya Mungu wewe ukabaki ukiwa msalia ama ukiwa mabaki na ukasimama na Mungu na ndio maana hata siku ya leo uko hapa Wengine mlikuwa mnafanya biashara nao kisuri suri na msukosuko janga umbaya maovu yakaja yakambeba wale watu walikuwa marafiki uliwajua walikuwa mcha Mungu na wote wakaamua tutaelekea jia hii kwa sababu lazima biashara zetu zisimame hata kama ni kwa jia ya hongo hata kama ni kwa jia ya ufisadi lakini biashara zetu zikasimama wewe ukabaki ukiwa bado unamshikilia Mungu na unasema huyu ndiye nitakojea mpaka
akaniona ni nini kitakachotokea kutokana na hili imefanyika wewe ndiye anazungumzia wewe ni msalia wewe ni mabaki Suka suka ukaja kabeba watu hata kutoka imani na wengi wakarudi nyuma siku ya leo uko hapa kwa ajili bado unamtumaini ya Bwana na bado unamtegemea Bwana na bado unatazamia ya kwamba hata kama kuna kitu kisuri suri na kuna msuka suko bado huyu Mungu atajitokeza wewe ndiye masalia msalia wewe ndiye mabaki wewe ndiye naye zungumzia ila kuna wakati ufika wengi katika kisuri kisuri hicho na msuka suko huo na mabaya hayo kuja wanasika mahali wanamezwa na yale mambo ambayo yamewakujia kuna bintu wakawangware anapigaga duru kwa TV anasema dunia simama nishuke ushamsikia kwa sababu kisuri suri kinaweza kuja usikia kama unaweza Mungu apasue ardhi uingie ndani usahaulike but those who stand with God wale wanao simama na Mungu pia jirani yako kuna Mungu anayerejesha Mwambie Mungu kuna naye Mungu anayerejesha. Biblia inazungumza juu ya mtoto huyu anaitwa Mephi. Nikisema Mephi ujue nasema Mephi Bosheth. Ili tuondoe hii masubuko. Tuseme Mephi, si ndio? So kijana Mephi ukisoma kwa Biblia kuna Mephi wawili. Mephi mmoja ni yule alikuwa the son of Jonathan or of Saul aliyekuwa mfalme wa Israeli lakini kuna mefi wa pili yule alikuwa naye mwana wa mwana wa huyo huyo Saulo mwanaye aliyeitwa Jonathan sasa huyo mefi wa Jonathan ndiye anazungumzia juu yake na Biblia inasema ya kwamba katika wakati wa Saulo kulikuja hicho kisurisuri cha kisiasa na ubaya ukaingia katika nchi na kikabeba watu wengi kiwango cha kwamba familia yote ya Sauli ikauawa na watu wakamalizika isipokuwa Mephi aliyesimama na kuwashwa akiwa hai kisurisuri cha siasa kikawaua wote walioitanishwa na familia ya Sauli ila Mephi ndiye aliyokolewa akiwa wa miaka tano na mama aliyekuwa mjakazi na biblia inasema wakati alikuwa anatoroka kisuri kisuri kile akiwa mbio akamwangusha mefi kwa kutotaka na mefi akaanguka na akawa kiwete kuanzia miaka tano na ndio maana nilikuwa nawaambia watu in the morning ya kwamba ni makosa kubwa kama we ni mkristo kuomba na usahau kuombea nchi yako na hasa siasa kwa sababu nchi hii hatuko katika giza vile siasa mbovu inaweza fanya watu na kuacha kuna watu wako viwete wa mwili siku hii kwa sababu ya kisuri suri cha siasa kuna watu wako kiwete cha uchumi na cha kifedha kwa sababu ya kisuri suri cha siasa kuna watu wako kiwete wa mawazo na hisia kwa sababu ubovu na ubaya ulikuja katika nchi ukabeba watu na ukawaacha wakiwa majeraha na pengine nazungumzia mtu aliye hapa siku ya leo wewe ni mmoja wa wale wanaweza shuhudia ya kwamba siasa mbaya ni maisha mbaya and that is why as a believer you need it as your responsibility kuombea inchi na viongozi wakati unaomba sasa biblia inasema kisuri suri cha kisiasa kikaja katika nchi na saulo na familia yake watu wakaenda ila tumefi ndiye aliyebaki na maandiko yanasema alipoashwa 
na kuanguka yule mama akambeba sijui kama ni mama aliyembeba nadhani hivyo akampeleka mpapa mpaka pahali panaoitwa Lodibar huko Lodibari akamuacha huko kwa sababu bila ionyeshi ya kwamba yeye ndiye alimlea lakini Lodibari Mefi akaachwa huko akiwa kiwete akiwa hana lolote mali ya baba yake hajui kwa wapi mali ya babu yake hajui nani yako nayo na hakuna lolote lile alilukua ila tu alikuwa gizani na nikiwete cha mwili nikiwete cha hisia na mawazo because of trauma and you can put your shelf in the shoe of mercy na uone hali na maisha mercy aliyoanza akiwa mchanga wa miaka tano. Na sasa hivi kuna watu tunaweza kuwa ninazungumza anasema Reverend hata mimi ni Kolodibari. Kisuri suri kilikuja. Msuka suka ulikuja. Janga lilitokea kwa familia yangu ama kwa kazi yangu kwa biashara zangu kwa ofisi kule nafanya kazi. Nikatikishwa cha hii ni Kolodibari. Jina Lodibari linamaanisha a place of emptiness a place of nothingness pahali pa utupu there is other word pahali hapana kitu chochote hivyo ndivyo jina lodibari inamaanisha na mefi akajipata lodibari hana chochote familia ameenda wote hana jala kushikilia na kujisimamisha katika kimaisha hana baba ameuawa mama hayuko babu wala nyanya hana kazi na anaweza endea kwa sababu hata kule alikoka Biblia haijasema ya kwamba alikuwa mtu wa familia yao kwa sababu wote walifagiliwa by the disaster that came in life only mercy who remained a remnant lakini sikia Mungu tunaye omba na tunaye mwamini na tunaye mwabudu ni Mungu ambaye anajua watu wake kule wako anaelewa watu mabaki wako pande gani na yeye hata wakati uko katika lodi bai yeye Mungu anajua na anafahamu mahali uko even when you feel you are empty in life the lord that we serve and we believe in and we trust in he knows ya kwamba kuna mabaki wako pahali anajua kuna manusura wako mahali anajua kuna masalia wako pahali Lodebar ni pahali pa kujichunga kwa sababu inabidi inaligana umeenda Lodebar ukimjua Mungu wako kiwango gani kwa sababu ukifika Lodebar a place of nothingness a place of emptiness kama hauna Mungu na hauna maono ya Mungu wako vizuri haujamjua Mungu wako vizuri utapoteza maono ya Mungu utapoteza maono ya mbingu na hata wokovu utauachilia lakini nashukuru Bwana kwa sababu kila kimefanya uwe hapa siku ya leo na usikie ijili hii ni kwa sababu wewe ni mabaki waliosalia katika imani na katika nyumba ya Mungu that even today you can still say Jesus is still Lord I was telling people in the morning My daughter gave me a a CD video niangalia ya mtoto mmoja ambaye ako katikati ya miaka 8 na 9 nikiwa kwa gari bila kujua kwamba anisaidia kuhubiri Na huyo mtoto ni kipofu Na anaimba wimbo unasema ya kwamba wewe ndiye Mungu unayefungua macho ya vipofu Wewe ndiye Mungu unayefungua macho ya nani na nimesema huyo mtoto ni nini? Inalingana Lodi Bali utaendako ukimjua Mungu wako vipi? Kwa sababu hali ya Lodi Bali ama Lodi Bali haitakikani kuondoa picha ama maono iliyonayo juu ya Mungu wako. Kama unamjua Mungu wako ni mponyaji, hata wakati unatetemeka kwa kitanda na ugojwa, bado you can still sing a song ya kwamba God you are healer. When you know that your God is God who lifts hata kama leo uko chini unaweza sing na utunga wimbo unaosoma wewe ndio Mungu unayeinua unaweza kuwa lodibari na mfuko hakuna shilingi naweza mgoga 
nyingine when you are in your the body of kiuchumi when you know you are god you can still sing a song and give a testimony that i serve god who is a provider lord a place of emptiness a place of nothingness a place without pasture and in life there are times you can find yourself in such a place all a time comes of lord ebar we are trying to touch touch who is around everybody is gone the family people don't want to hear anything about you even it's like god also when you try to touch him and to fill him with the physical there's nowhere only those who have an eye of the spirit can be able to see god in lord ebar and mephi was one of those wale mabaki ambao alisema nitasimama na Mungu wale mabaki ambao alisema hata katika Lord Ibari bado I will not lose the vision of my God I will tell you why Madiko anasema Alipoacha Lord Ibari a place of nothingness nothing to hold everything is gone akasimama na huyo Mungu aliyemjua ama aliyefundishwa akaambiwa huyu ndiye Mungu aliyewa baba yako huyu ndiye Mungu aliyekuwa babu yako huyu ndiye Mungu taifa lako lilaabudu Mephi akakuwa akijua Mungu yule jina Mephi linamaanisha an idol breaker can you say an idol breaker can you say an idol breaker sema kama unajua an idol breaker the name Mephi also means an exterminator of shame an exterminator of shame or an eradicator of shame anayeondoa haibu na anayevunja miungu and i believe that maybe for mephi kurisema mwachana na mephi hiyo ingine mephi alijua mungu wake vizuri ya kwamba hakutaka kucheza na kuaibisha Mungu wake. Angeliona aibu ikija kwa Mungu wake, Mephi aligeliondoa. Na ndio maana alishikilia Mungu hata Lord Bar. Akasema nitasimama na Mungu huyu na sitamwaibisha Mungu huyu mpaka nione ni wapi ananipeleka na ni kipi hiki ambacho anameniwekea katika maisha. In Lord Bar hapo ndipo wengi tunamwaibisha Mungu kwa sababu tunasahau mazuri yote Mungu wetu alitufanyia tunasahau lile neno lote ambalo tunalijua katika maisha lakini Mephi alishikilia huyo Mungu aibu yote ikamletea Mungu akakataa nayo akakatana nayo na akaiondoa katika maisha yake alijua kupigana na pepo wakati wa Lord Bar zile ambazo zinaweza kuja na kujaribu kumwambia afanye lingine ambalo linaweza aibisha Mungu wake and it's my prayer that whoever is listening to me today katika Lord Ibari yako utahakikisha kwamba Mungu hata haibika sema amina kama uko pamoja na mimi utahakikisha kwamba umeondoa miungu yote inaweza jaribu kuja kusimama utaivuja vuja kama ni kwa magoti kwa kinywa chako utainenea na uiambia ya kwamba i know that my god lives kwa sababu lord bar huko ndiko watu upata watu wakasaidia anaambia kuna pahali unaweza enda kwa ngware weka kando huu shuhuda na huu wokovu wokovu weka kando hii mambo ya imani yako kwanza nikakuonyesha vile unaweza fanya ili uweze ufanikiwa katika kimaisha kwa sababu maisha ya Lord Bar si maisha yako na raha unless you have the god of joy in you that is the only thing that can make you survive or live in Lord Bar mafi akashikilia huyo Mungu na akapigana na miungu yote ikajaribu kusimama naye kama vile neno lake linalosema anaida breaker na akakataa kumwaibisha Mungu wake katika lodebar 
Biblia inasema Lodibari alikaa kwa mtu anayeitwa Makiri Makiri Jina Makiri linamaanisha noi akakaa kwa mtu anayejua matatizo ya mabaki Watu wako na moyo wa kushika mabaki kwa wakati wa janga na wakati wa mabaya akakaa kwa makiri mtu ambaye katika kuishi kwake alikuwa na nafasi ya kuhifadhi mabaki ambayo amebebwa na kukutwa na janga maishani makiri anayejua matatizo ya watu na niombi langu ya kwamba katika nchi hii niombi langu ya kwamba katika nyumba ya Bwana Mungu atapeana makiri wanayohifadhi mabaki wanaojua kutetea mabaki wanaojua kutunza mabaki na kuna mtu, mtu aliye hapa siku ya leo na pengine wewe ni makiri wa siku hii wa familia yako na hata pengine nchi hii wa kijiji chako kuna watoto umewahifadhi kwako kuna watoto unaelea wewe hujawazaa kuna watoto unasomesha wewe haujawazaa lakini waliachwa na baba zao wakaachwa na mama zao familia zao zikaharibika wewe ukaona uahifadhi kwa nyumba yako inua mkono wako juu kwa jina la Yesu inua mkono wako juu kwa jina la Yesu kila mmoja inua mkono wako juu inua mkono wako juu baba naomba baraka kwa makiri walio katika nyumba hii kwa jina la Yesu. Yeyote yule anashughulikia na kuhifadhi na kusomesha watoto ambao hajazaa. Kwa jina la Yesu na nena baraka. Na nena pingu ikafunguke kwa ajili ya mmoja wao katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Sema amen kama unaamini hivyo. Unawezaje kiwete kushukua mabaki ya mtu hana lolote ana watu wao unasomesha unanyima watoto wako haki na starehe zile pesa ukiwapeleka kule mani hata ni kwa nunulu yangu na kule kuingina kwa raha hizo pesa unasema ni za zigeuza nisazipeleka kwa huyu mtoto aliye mabaki wa janga aliye mabaki wa mabaya aliye mabaki wanaweza kuwa ni watoto wa ndugu zako wanaweza kuwa ni watoto wa sister zako wanaweza kuwa ni watoto wa majirani yako wa familia ya kweni ambaye haijiwesi waliokutwa na janga wakajikuta kwamba hana uwezo wowote wewe ndio nazungumzia na inanena baraka juu yako kwa sababu we ni makiri makiri akachukua mefi akamlea kampagusa uchafu wote wa choo miaka mitano hakuwa anajua kuoga kamuosha kamvisha kama kuna masomo akasomesha kama kuna skills na training akamfanyisha mtoto wa wenyewe mabaki ya ubaya ya uovu ya janga ya kisurisuri ya misukosuko makiri akamfikisha kiwango cha kuoa na biblia inasema akawa binti anazungumzia mabinti walioko hapa siku ya leo wewe unayekutwa na ma Ma, na mefi akiwa na uwete hata kama sio wa mwili uwete wa kiuchumi uwete wa mambo na kimaisha lakini hauangaliangi hai hello amen na bin tuzungumzie mapiti ambao hawajali uwete wa mefi kwa sababu wao kila wanaangalia ni mtu aliye na Mungu na mabaki ambao wanamcha Mungu najua siku zetu watu kuwa na mambo mengi Dio tuliokota watu hawakuwa na kitu.
kile tulitaka kujua huyu mtu ana Mungu huyu mtu ananena na dimi huyu mtu anaenda pingu hii makina ni ya baadaye na nafikiri huyu binti aliyempaka mesi alikuwa binti wa siku zetu cha muhimu ni kujua Mungu yuko ndani ya huyu kwa sababu yoyote aliye na Mungu abie jirani yako uwe na hakika atainuka binti akakubali kijana aitoe mefi na uwete wake bila nasema katika harakati hizo wakabarikiwa na mtoto aitwaye Mark Mika Mwambie jirani yako Mungu utabelea watu ulodebari Mwambie hata kama haamini mwambie Mungu utabelea watu ulodebari Kunazo baraka za lodebari kwa wale wanao mtumaini ya Mungu kwa wale wanao mwangalia Mungu kwa nao wanasimama na Mungu hata kama Mungu hakai kama naishiki lodebari hata kama nikutebea na tabeaka alafu anatoka kama ni hivyo lakini ukweli ni kwamba kuna baraka za lodebari Biblia inasema Mephi aliwaa kachomoa binti huko alafu akabarikiwa na mtoto aitwaye Mika Mika linamaanisha who is like Jehovah Eh Nani aliye kama Mungu Who is like God Hivyo hivyo jina Mika linamaanisha Mephi alijua ya kwamba Lodibari hauwezi pata lolote because it's a place of nothingness. Baraka yote inayoweza kuja Lodibari ni ile baraka imepeanwa na Mungu mwenyewe. Uwezo wako hauwezi leta baraka Lodibari. Nguvu na masomo yako Lodibari hazifanyi kazi. Ila Mungu ashushe Neema yake ukubebe rodi bar. Hakuna yeyote yule anaweza kutembelea huko. It is a place of nothingness, a place of emptiness, pahali pa kavu pa tupu. Ni tuku mtumaini ya Mungu. Huo ndio wakati Mungu utembea rodi bar. Na ndio maana baraka aliyoipata rodi bar, alihakikisha imeitanishwa na Mungu wake. Nataka kukuuliza swali wakati ulikuwa lodibari ama sasa uko lodibari baraka zako Mungu akiitwa dadi zinaweza itika pesa zilizoko kwa bank zinaweza tajwa na Mungu unayesema uko nayo kazi ambayo unaifurahia siku ya leo unaweza sema Mungu anaweza itwa hapo aitike na you are identified with the god that you serve nafasi yoyote ambayo umeikamata katika maisha na hasa wakati wa lodibari kwa sababu wakati wa lodibari hapo ndipo majaribu yako mengi ya kujaribiwa ya kujitafutia msaada kujitafutia mapato kujitafutia mambo kwa jia ambayo hata kama sio ya Mungu bora i survive in lodibari that is the spirit that many times is usually in people and especially mabaki unapotazama hivi unaona wale wote mlokuwa nao mkaanza biashara pamoja biashara zao zinanawiri yako ndio iko nyuma unasema hata mimi hata nikipange nifanye lolote lile biashara yangu isimame can that business be identified with god to mephi it was the opposite that is why when he got this blessing in lodibari he said i will call this blessing who is like jehovah who is like god when i was meditating upon this meeting nilikuwa pale kwa hii message nilikuwa pale kwa hii jengo huko ndani ikiwa alikasikia Mungu ananizungumzia ndani yangu ya kwamba hii kanisa inajengwa na mabaki abia jirani yako hii kanisa inajengwa na mabaki and I was hearing God telling me that after we are finished to build the sanctuary nitatafuta pahali hata kama nitaandika na choko ama makaa niandike mika who is 
is like Jehovah. Who is like God? Because this church is built by remnants. We are living in times what? Wanakosa ratha na kazi ya nyumba ya Mwana. Tunaishi nyakati wengi wanarudi nyuma hataki mambo ya kanisa. Tunaishi nyakati hata wachungaji hawataki kusikia mambo ya kujaga makanisa kwa sababu wanajua gharama. Na ni kama uchumi wa Kenya umepeleka watu wa Dubai. Ni mabaki tu wanaojenga hii kanisa. Wala wanasema even in Lodiba God still visits his people Hata Lodiba Mungu anatabelea watu wake Mungu anakubuka mabaki Wamnao ishi Na kuka Wamekatalia ichili na ima idani ya Yesu Who is like Jehovah? Who is like God? A spirit of leadership Lack of interest In serving God There is so much sweeping. The Christians and believers. Lakini kuna wa mabaki. Kuna wa mabaki. Kuna wa mabaki. Nasema kuna manusura. And that is why me and you. We are here. Ready. To seek God. Even in Rodibari. Kule tunaiza jikuta. Dio Biblia inasema Daudi wakati alikaa ama alishika ushukani na kwa mfalme kadhibitishwa ya kwamba ni mfalme wa Israeli sababu ya agano lile aliyolokuwa nalo na Jonathan akakubuka hilo agano na akataka kutimiza lile walilokubaliana na Jonathan kabla ya Jafa. Jonathan aliyekuwa baba yake Mephibosheth. Ndio Biblia inasema ya kwamba akaulizia Jeku na ye mtu aliyebaki katika familia ya Saulo. Ili niweze kumuonyesha mema ama kumfanya mema ya Mungu. And that's the time Mephi alipoitwa kule alikokuwa ameenda na anaka Sababu Daudi alisema huyo mtoto alipoambiwa kuna mtoto wa Jonathan aliyebaki na ni mmoja Daudi akasema aitwe kule aliko na kulipoulizwa akajulikana Mephi huko na anaka Lodibari kwa huyo ndugu anayeitwa Makiri Stari wa saba unasema Mephi alipoitwa na akaja. Daudi akamtazama. Akamwambia kwamba nitakurejeshea. Mali, mashamba, the property and wealth and land of your grandfather. Because Mephi was the right person to inherit. Na akamuahidi the possession that you were from the beginning. Eating from the master's table. Hapa dipo na kurejesha. Ulikuwa unakula kwa meza ya mfani. Nani na kurejesha hapo. Cheo. Heshima. Mali. Na kurejesha. Mfalme akamwambia mefi hivyo. Na kuna watu mungu anazugumza nao siku ya leo. Umekalo dibari. Hata umesahau vijiko vilikuwa vinafishikwa kwa njia gani? Ulizoea maisha mema na mazuri ya starehe. Ulijua kukula na tawe la kwa kifua. Lakini lodibari zote ziliishia. Leo nazungumza na wewe. That the Lord who are with you from the beginning. The same God aliyekuwa naye kabla ya janga na kabla ya kisuri suri kuja na kabla ya janga kutokekea. He is the same God today and he is restoring you to your possession. The Bible says that David recalled Mephi to where he belonged. Leo hii sije sura yako inakaaje? Sijui hali inakaaje? The only word I 
do not want you to forget. It is that there is God of remnants. Kuna mungu wa mabaki. Wale wanasimama na yeye wanakataa majaribu yote. Wanasema huyu ndiye Mungu. Nitakaye angalia. Huyu ndiye Mungu. Nitakaye tumaini. Huyu ndiye Mungu. Nitakaye tazama. Na huyu ndiye Mungu nitaitanishwa naye. Verse 10 says A man called Ziba akaitwa yeye alijua kule mefi yuko abia jirani yako wachana na watu wote si watu wazuri mwambie wachana na watu sio watu wazuri jua ni nani unakaa naye maisha haya jiba hata kama alikuwa mtu alikuwa kitu long since Matthew was five years to the time of marrying and even getting a child Ziba knew ya kwamba Matthew ya kolodibari ako in a place of emptiness ako in a place of nothingness and yet all through he was silent and enjoying the world and the lives of his godfather And I speak to your Ziba today. In the name of Jesus. I speak to your Ziba today. Everyone who holds your blessing. Any person who has taken your possession. In the name of Jesus. I speak restoration. They will return it. And in shame. Ziba means. A fight. Those people who fight with you and the blessings that God wants you to have in life. Ziba means an army. They are enemies of demons and evil spirits and devils that fight with the children of God not to receive the blessings that God has for them. Ziba means strength. Na kuna manguvu yanao simama ya kipepo katika maisha ya wakristo inawazuilia kuweza kunyakuwa na kupokea na kujua hasa ahadi za bwana maisha ni mwao ni gani and he is only enjoying when you are suffering he is enjoying the world that belongs to you and yet it is supposed to be yours. Inuka kwa miguu yako. Inuka kwa miguu yako. We will speak to this Ziba today. We will speak to this Ziba today. I'm saying we will speak to Ziba today. Because he has to release. I don't know you. I don't know about you. But Ziba will not enjoy the world that belongs to me. Ziba will not enjoy the blessings that belong to me. Even if he start like a statue as a name, even when he fights. But it depends in Lord Ibari. Have you been with that God? Because God of the covenant remembers those who are remnants. Do you have that God with you? Because it's only God who can sustain you. In Lord Ibari. Lift up your hand before Jesus. The Bible says in verse 13 that we added with. Yakoba Daudi akasema. Mephi aletwe. Mephi akarudishwa Yerusalemu akaendelea kula kwenye kiti cha mfalme miaka yake yote akarejeshwa sifa akarejeshwa heshima akarejeshwa mali akarejeshwa mashamba akarejeshwa utajiri uliokuwa wa babu yake na baba yake and today we have an opportunity 
of claiming yet another time and a blessing that belongs to us. Lift up your hand in Jesus' name. Speak it to yourself. You know Ziba of your time. You know Ziba of your time. Places of work. Pekino kuhuko. Unajua huu jamaa. Hii nafasi ya mekalia. Inatakikana kuwa yangu. Ina atafutiwe yake. Ukalia ila yuko yako. Katika maisha. Lift up your hand in Jesus' name. Because there are people God are restoring to their place he has been recalling today. To the possession they belong to. You have been Lord Ibari for too long. You have been Lord Iba for too long. God is recalling you to where you belong. To your world where you belong.